Hey what's up guys welcome back so finally we successfully booted android 12 ph stable aos pgsi on the Nord 2 and the major functionalities are working here but also there are some major bugs for some people it may be not deal breaking but for some it may be i will discuss all the bugs later in this video so in the form of this working gs i will get the test of android 12 before the official update also we get the hope that on the basis of this gsi we will get the other custom roms soon so if you are really interested in this gsi build you can go forward but it doesn't take any responsibility and guarantee it will work for you but just to check how this rom looks and works on not to you can watch this video so without wasting time let's get started on the new adventure Before installation, phone must be OEM unlock, latest ADB and the fastboot driver installed on your PC, link is given under the video description. So here I am using the Oxygen OS A11 Android 11 stock firmware. First enable the developer option by tapping 8 times on your build number. Now in the developer option enable the USB debugging. Now download the phstable.gsf file from the link given and extract it using the exit file extractor. We will get the image file, also download the vpmeta image file, transfer these files in one place on your PC. Now if you are rooted then use the advanced reboot application open and click reboot to bootloader or if you are not rooted then connect phone to the PC, type adb devices, enter and then type adb reboot bootloader. In this way boots into the bootloader mode. Connect phone to the PC and go to the folder where we place both the files click shift plus right click of the mouse. From the drop down menu select open command prompt here. Now in the cmd command window type enter fastboot devices. If your device is properly connected then we can see the device id there. Now type the command that I mark on the screen. You can also type or the paste that command I have given that under the video description also and hit enter. Now type and enter the fastboot reboot fastboot. This command will reboot your device into the fastboot D mode within the TWRP or your stock recovery as you can see on the screen. Now again check whether device is connected or not. Type and enter the command fastboot devices. After that rename our extracted image file to the simple one. Here I change it to the system image. Now type and enter the command fastboot flash system system image and hit enter. Flashing process will take 5 to 10 minutes after that when you see the flashing finish message click reboot button and select recovery so we will boot back to the TWRP or your stock recovery. Now click format data or the factory set in the TWRP and slide to confirm. If you are on the stock recovery just click factory set and enter now click reboot to the system. One will take 2 to 5 minutes to boot as soon as we boot we will face the device certification error. To solve this we need two applications device id apk and any browser here i am using the opera mini as this rom didn't comes with any browser initially now download and transfer them in internal storage of your device later install both the apks one by one open device id apk in that copy the device framework id now using the browser go to the mentioned website in the video description there first log in to the google account now paste your framework id and click register now close the browser just wait for the two minutes now go to the settings applications there clear the data for the device framework application google play store app and the google play services app now first of all these three apps now open the play store now your problem must be solved so let's check the settings about phone here you will see the new android 12 easter egg to check the animation just round the dial to the 12. Security patch is updated to 5th November 2021 and the kernel is 4.14. Now to change the stock thread button navigation bar to the navigation gesture just go to the settings system gestures and enable the navigation gestures. So what's new thing we get in android 12. Now the quick setting panel has the big rounder shape tiles. We got the new power menu control. New settings app with the new scrolling animations, new look of the volume and the brightness sliders, new screenshot menu with the long screenshot option, new lock screen with the big clock. Under the PHH table setting, we get the dose control. Miscellaneous settings is force closing. Under the IMS setting, we can experiment for the enabling the OLT because the OLT calling didn't working in the ROM. To experiment, we need to check mark the last two options. Then click create IMS APN. 
Now click second option, you will see the new IMS APK will download, install it and reboot your device but nothing worked for me on my Nord 2 but you can try. In the customization settings we get the assigned color, icon shapes, icon pack and the font setting along with the system UI tuner. So the major things like the Wi-Fi networks, Wi-Fi hotspots working good without any issues. Sadly the allow slider not working at all. Sounds for the music and the video is working good. Here is a sample. Hey what's up guys welcome back. You are watching for tech. So I got the new incremental update for my Nord 2 Oxygen OS V11. But as I am rooted anti WRP installed I can't able to flash this update. Some users Bluetooth connections are working good without any issues. Camera app is also working which takes the pics and the shoots the video along with the audio. But the app is really basic so we can alternatively use the Gcam. The link of the app is given under the video description. Gcam has the features like the night sight, portrait, slow motion, time lapse and the most of the things are working in the app. In the display setting, adapt to brightness seems not working. This is the major bug. Dark theme with the scheduled option is now available. Night light is also working good. Some display tuning options are available under the display setting. Under display fingerprint doesn't work at all. As per the developer, device maintainer have to write the code for the GSI build to make the fingerprint scanner work. So we have to wait for it. Another bug I found is the TWRP data encryption doesn't work means we can't able to access the data in the TWRP even after the formatting the data partition. So even if we need to restore the an Android backup or to flash any zip file, we need to place them in any OTG pen drive and connect it to access them. Except this all the things are working. If you want to revert back to the stock, you need to restore the an Android backup using the OTG cable in the TWRP. Or I have given the fastboot firmware in the description, you can flash that also. I'll know that this ROM has the lots of major bugs but they are not deal breaking. So if you are interested to try, follow at your own risk and keep the backup for the safety always. I am waiting for the new custom ROM. If you will get, I will definitely make a video on that. So please stay tuned. So if I help you, please do like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. Signing off. Bye bye. Take care.